Hey, Bill. What day is it? Hey, gang. Welcome back to Hey, Bill, What Day Is It? Do we have any Girl Scouts out there? How about Boy Scouts? What about everyone who's ever sat around a campfire and made s'mores? I guess that covers about everybody. Well, be sure to stock up on marshmallows so on August 30th, you can celebrate National Toasted Marshmallow Day with us. I hope no one is watching that has alphaphobia. That's the fear of marshmallows because I've discovered a lot of really cool things about this fluffy white little treat. Ligonier, Indiana is the marshmallow capital of the world and holds an annual marshmallow festival. How sweet is that? But let's get started on our own celebration. Get your friends together, gather up some firewood, grab a few long sticks and a bag of marshmallows and get ready for a fantastic evening. Toasted marshmallows are a special part of summer evenings around a crackling fire. They can also be a special part of the winter evenings around the fireplace. What better way to kick off a long weekend than to enjoy a delicious, warm, gooey, toasted marshmallow? Add a pair of graham crackers and a chocolate bar and ask for s'more. By the way, if it's more s'mores that you have a hankering for, there are several companies that now make a special s'mores making stove where you can make them year round in the comfort of your own home. Depending upon personal preference, you can heat marshmallows to various degrees. Some like them just toasted enough to be gooey. Some just toasted to a light brown color, such as this. Others look for a charred outer layer like this. Charring a marshmallow is simple. Hold it in the flame until the sugar catches fire, then carefully blow it out. And it's important not to wave it around because you'll only fan the flames and potentially fling molten marshmallow all over yourself and everybody else. Some people think that burnt marshmallows are bad for you. Well, I have good news, folks. There are no amino acids or creatine in your delicious marshmallows. All they are is a big ball of puffed sugar and gelatin. If you're one of those weirdos that likes to burn your marshmallows, you can crawl into your sleeping bag with a smile, knowing that you're completely safe. I won't go so far as to say that marshmallows are good for you, but at least I can say with confidence that they aren't bad for you. Marshmallows also come in a variety of flavors and colors and sizes from minis and regular to even giant size. For a fun alternative, try roasting marshmallow peeps for those of you who enjoy watching flaming baby chicks. Watch them closely as the granular sugar coating will burn more quickly. Believe it or not, marshmallows date back to ancient Egypt. A plant called the mallow plant was grown along the banks of the Nile in marshy areas. That's how it got its name. The Egyptians extracted the sap from the root and created a candy with nuts and honey. Actually, candy was only one thing the mallow plant was used for, but I'm sure glad they discovered that use. I wonder if they ever thought we would still be enjoying marshmallows thousands of years later. Unfortunately, Back then, you and I wouldn't even have been able to enjoy this culinary treasure. Ancient writings tell us that the mallow root was used as an offering for the gods and pharaohs. I wouldn't recommend putting marshmallows in the offering plate at church this Sunday. It isn't received in the same manner today. No, that wouldn't be good. Actually, the pharaohs considered themselves gods, so I think it was really their way of making sure that the delicious candy treat was just for them. They decreed that only royalty could eat this mallow treat. There's even a sort of recipe from the ancient Romans. Mix together the mallow sap from the plant root, honey and grain, and bake it into a cake. Scholars have found additional references 
to it in ancient Roman and Greek writings. They began to use the root for medicinal purposes, to cure sore throats and lessen pain. The Latin word for marshmallow is Althesis officinalis. It was named after the Greek althea, meaning to heal or cure. During the 15th and 16th centuries, the mallow root was used to cure toothaches, coughs, sore throats, indigestion. Hmm, I think I know what I'm asking my wife for next time I'm sick. I don't think she'll buy it though. Okay, I also learned that they shredded the root as a treat and a medicine for their dogs. I wonder how many other medicines are interchangeable. I better not try. Like they say on Mythbusters, don't try this at home, ever. Alton Brown from the Food Network show Good Eats dedicated an entire episode of his show to making homemade marshmallows. It's not really all that tough. Today, homemade marshmallows use sugar, unflavored gelatin, corn syrup, and flavoring. You don't have to row a boat through the marshes and find the mallow plants. Just go to your local grocery store. Now, don't get scared out there, but there are reports of people using marshmallows to kill moles. While there are ingredients in commercial marshmallows that are detrimental to moles, they are harmless to humans, so we really don't need to worry about them. After all, Chocolate is poisonous to dogs, but it hasn't done me any harm, and I eat a lot of chocolate. The evidence that the marshmallows will help control molds is strictly anecdotal and has not been thoroughly researched. It could be that since a marshmallow is about the same size as a mole burrow, it simply serves as a plug. <laughs> now, this is the point in the show where I relate the topic of the show to something in the Bible. It's kind of tough this time, though. The only place in the Bible that mentions marshmallows is Job 6.6, 6, and the notes in my Bible commentaries indicate that the meaning of that Hebrew phrase is not known. So I'm not going to force the scriptures to say something that they do not. I will, however, contend that the smooth texture and sweet flavor of marshmallows makes them what I consider heavenly. It's a gentle, soothing feel in the mouth and makes them a sort of comfort food. There are other flavors that I like, such as jalapenos, hot wings, spicy Tex-Mex dishes. I also like things like sour candies and lemons and salt and vinegar potato chips. But these are extremes that can't be identified with the word comfort. It seems like they assault the taste buds, while a marshmallow feels like you're eating a cloud that envelops your senses gently. People are a lot like that. Some folks have a demeanor that just seems to grate on you, like hot peppers, kind of like Don Rickles. They're not someone you want to spend a lot of time around. Other people have that soft and gentle attitude that just makes you feel good all over, like uh, Mr. Rogers. In the Bible, in Ephesians 5.22, it describes such an attitude as the fruit of the Spirit. See if this fits our perception of the marshmallow. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Does that sound like Don Rickles or Mr. Rogers? When we as Christians go out into the world to tell the lost about Christ and His saving grace, which personality should we emulate? It's the difference between warm and fuzzy and cold and prickly. When my wife was in high school, one of her friends invited her to go to church with him. She said no one was friendly and the preacher just condemned everyone. Even though she continued to go to her own church, it wasn't until she was almost 30 that she again visited a church like that and discovered the true nature of Jesus. 
She knew in her mind all about him and even served him, but hadn't trusted in him because the marshmallow someone gave her was too burnt and the people were prickly. This channel is here to help Christians be more effective at evangelism, and I usually demonstrate how to turn any conversation or topic toward the holy or spiritual. But this week is more about techniques to make your sweet spirit come to the forefront when encountering a lost person. In 1 Peter 3.15, it tells us that we should always be prepared to give an answer to anyone or everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. You'll always be more effective in your witnessing if you use the marshmallows of heaven rather than the jalapenos of hell. Lost people everywhere are looking for good news, but we shouldn't deliver it by hitting them over the head with a 17-pound Schofield reference Bible. It's true that we have the good news of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, but always remember that the lost aren't out there for us to conquer, but rather to gently win to Christ. I'm Bill Wasor, and this is Hey Bill, What Day Is It? Get out there and show some love. Toast a few marshmallows and share them with your lost friends. I've found that this usually works much better than this. Get out there and have a triumphant day.